thanks for joining me today. Today, I want to go over how to find roof rafter lengths using Pythagorean's theorem. If I even said that right, who cares? But anyway, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I've already showed you how to use this, do the step off method. Showed you how to do the roof frame. Today, I'm going to show you how to. Man, it's windy out here. Today, I'm going to show you how to do the math and figure it out. As long as you know the run and the rise, in other words, we're going to use a four foot span of the building and you take two of that to find a gable rafter. So it's going to be 24 inches, two feet is 24 inches run and it's going to be an 812 pitched roof, meaning for every foot the roof is going to rise eight inches. So two feet is going to rise the roof 16 inches. So knowing that the rise is 16 inches and the runs 24 inches, let me show you how we come up with the rafter length. All right, let's get into the math. An 812 pitch roof. So remember I said we were gonna use a four foot, um, four foot run total. So when you do a gable rafter, you divide the total run in half and that's how you find your rafter. So, two feet is 24 inches, and it's 812, so every foot it rises 8 inches, so we got a 16 inch rise. So how do we get the rafter length? So Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared, which is 24, is 576. 16 squared is the rise, is 256. It equals 832, get the square root, it's 28.84, and you convert that to inches, and that's going to be roughly 28 and 7 eighths of an inch. And then, yeah, Jordan, I'm doing a video. You want to come say hey? Do you want to say hello in my YouTube video? So then 24 is the run, 16 is the rise, and 28 and 7 eighths. Now, I'm going to show you in the book where this number is true. So if I go into my rafter book, go to 812 pitch roof, and look up 2 feet, you can see it's 28, right here, Jordan, point right here, 28 and 7 eighths of an inch. And that's it. Now to lay that out with the square, what I would do is you put 8 and 12 on the edge of your board. I'm and not, Daddy cheats with this book. That book is a cheat? Yeah. How do you know that? Because it helps you cheat. Okay, well we're not going to cheat. Anyway, 8 is right here and 12 is here. I don't want to really get into this. You would mark here. You would... um pull a tape from the top of this point 28 and 7 eighths over and you would do it again with your frame of square you know mm -hmm. if you want to do it with the frame of square you just come here if you didn't have a regular square and you go to 8 to 8 for common rafters see common rafters is right here that's 8 I got it lined up and you can mark the same angle right here and, and then you can measure over Oh Lord. Did she really go there? All right. So that's the video for today. All right, today you learn how to use Pythagorean theorem. That's right, Pythagorean theorem. And I hope it helped you. I don't use this method, but you can use this method to calculate. If you don't use it for rafters, you can use it for for um, anything in math. And he knows that because of this cheat book. That is my cheat book for sure. But anyway, when I was in school, I would always wonder, I'm never gonna use that in real life. But if you're a teacher, this will be an excellent video to show your class applied math, how to use Pythagorean's theorem in real life. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Happy Easter. And subscribe. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. And comment down below. Comment down below. Y'all have a great day. I'm Chris. I'm Jordan. See you later. Bye. <clears throat>
I'm watching you.